wanted to give you a quick uh, rundown of my mornings when I play in church. I gotta be kind of quiet because my wife and daughter are sleeping in the next room. Um, typically, what I'll do is start with a uh, good cup of coffee. We got charts in Nashville called the Nashville Number System. And basically, there are no like, drum parts written on it, it's just kind of numbers. And that's the number system. I will make notes, kind of when some swells on her, like uh, groove notations on the chart so when we get to rehearsal I can just play them out and hopefully they sound good. Let's get some more coffee. 5 11 a.m. We got our rehearsals first and do a run through and then we have our services. We got five services. It's gonna be a long day but it's gonna be fun. I'm excited for you guys to come check it out. Come on let's go. All right we're in the car headed to the church. Got the phone ready listening to the Songs just one more time. We gotta make sure uh, the doors are shut. One second. Here's shut. Yikes. Probably really dark. And I probably just blinded you guys. So we're off. Hopefully, I don't suck this morning. We'll find out. we made it into the warehouse at church. I'm gonna unload and get everything set up. All right guys, we are here. Got everything set up, ready to go. Got some 16 inch Byzance hats, 20 inch Byzance extra thin crash. Hammered Crash, a uh, 22 Jazz Ride, and a 22 Medium Crash by Zance. Playing a DW Performance Series, uh, 12, 16, 22, and then I've got a 6.5 by 14 Ludwig Black Beauty with a big fat snare drum uh, donut. Got everything set up ready to go. Uh, so here's a couple of our first services. Check them out.
as a father, know you as a friend. What I have lived and the goodness of God. I love that. Come on, sing it out. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my pregnant one time um, and lost that child at 13 weeks. The second time we found out she had an ectopic pregnancy and we really struggled at that point. We said, do we continue to try to go through this grief or do we uh, just give up now and we're happy with the kids that we have? And that's when we decided one more chance. Gosh, it's about a, right, about a year ago, you know, um, we found out we were pregnant third time. We're like, third time is the charm. We've got this. And everything looked great early on, but then one test at 12 weeks uh, kind of changed that whole plan, and we found ourselves in the high-risk doctor's office. At week 16, the doctor sat us down after another ultrasound showing the fluid and told us that this baby will never take a breath outside the womb. Sing His praise aloud. 
through night through 20 of the pregnancy um, was when Awaken was starting at our church. And I think in our spiritual walk, we realized we're like, we're going to pray specific, bold prayers. And we're going to believe. And, you know, the human part of me was like, don't get your hopes up, Dana. The doctors say 100% chance you're going to lose this baby through Awaken and through what we were seeing in our lives. I remember texting my sister and saying, I feel like I've been asleep as a Christian and I have woken up. I actually walked in uh, to the ultrasound and this time I told the technician, watch, he's been working and I spoke truth into it uh, and I fully believed it. And sure enough, the ultrasound showed the, the fluids that they said medically there was no way for them to disappear disappeared. The only thing they saw was a heart defect. We had doctors crying. We had them say, you know, we've never seen this before. We can't medically un understand it or explain it. But you guys have gotten your miracle. And this is Emily Hope. <laughs> we did confirm that she does have Down syndrome and she does still have the heart defects. Uh, they're actually going to have to go in here in the next few months and move her aorta and her pulmonary. But crazy enough, through God's mercy, her little sick heart is perfectly balanced and doing exactly what we need. And we were hoping and praying that she was gonna grow to be strong enough for the uh, surgery. It's been a journey. Yeah, it's like you're, they say it's kind of like getting on a plane and you think you're going to Ireland. And instead, you know, the flight attendant comes over in the middle of the plane ride and says, actually, we're gonna land in Holland. And Holland's just as beautiful. Um, it's just a little different than what you expected. So we have great hopes and dreams for her. She brings so much joy to so many, and we're just so thankful that she's here and doing so well. She's not just surviving, she's thriving.